Hi, my name is John Storms, <clears throat> and I wanted to introduce you to my new toy. So, this is the Lightorama Input Pup. <clears throat> and what this does is it allows you to uh, make it so people can interact with your show. So, here we have two RJ45 jacks, and this works just like the RJ45 jacks on a regular Lightorama controller board, is that it talks uh, serial to everything else on the Lightorama network. The other thing on here, as you'll notice, is they got all these pins. Okay, and the way it works is that these are used for the to make uh, circuits. So here you have a uh, nine volt input, and you only need that if, for some reason, you don't have these connected. So when you pow power this up, it will run off of the uh, the booster. Okay, so it doesn't need external power. Now. This, the next pin there, is ground, and then you have eight inputs. So you wire up an input, it comes over to a switch, and I just have these normally open switches, and you press them, you press to close, and when it closes, it's connected to ground, and then ground comes back to here. And that's, that is all there is to hooking it up. And I got the switches, I just went and bought those at Radio Shack, so when I plug this guy in, that the red light starts flashing which means it has connection well it means it's it's powered up okay now you set the controller ID on this just like you would any other Lightorama device and it sits out on your network so if you have other Lightorama devices like here I have the uh, DC controller and then over here I have a 16 um, channel controller each one gets its own unique ID. <clears throat> so, come over to the computer here. You gotta go in here, and I find the uh, the Lightorama control panel. Lightorama control panel. And it says it is now running. All right. So now I come down here. On my little red light bulb, click on the right, go over here, find the hardware utility. Okay, so now this is our little hardware utility, and what I want to do is I want to change the ID number. So first of all, it's Mac, it's uh, comes with default of 10, so you want to make sure this is some number higher than 10, and then you know you auto configure your COM port, make sure it can find your uh, 485 network. It says I found on COM4. I come up here and I hit refresh, and it's going to go count through all those channel IDs from 00 up to hex 11, <coughs> and then it should find it. Now I'm going to change the controller ID, which means you don't want any other controllers on your network at the same time. So see, right there, I found the controller pu uh, pup at uh, hex 10. All right, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say the old unit ID was 10. And then on my network, I want it to be D. Change the unit ID. And it says the unit ID has been set to, to D. All right, so I come up here, I hit refresh. <coughs> You probably don't have to, but I did anyway. And it thinks, and it thinks, and it thinks, and it thinks. Okay, then this next part is going to be a little tricky holding the camera. Okay, so now I have input. So now I want to test it. So on mine, I've hooked up four of these switches. Okay. So let me drag them over here. Okay, so if you want to test it, what you do... Just come over to here, and you say test inputs for interactive, okay? And it says it can detect that it has up to eight inputs. So then I have my little switches. All right, so I come over here, and I'm going to press my switch. When I do, see, that's switch number three. This is switch number four. Switch number one. And switch number two. See, so my my four switches are working. All right, 
So I'm going to take this guy and put them right back here. Now I have this controller. This is my DC controller. It's controlling my floods. I'm going to plug him back into the booster. I didn't want him in there before because I didn't want to change his controller ID to D. His controller ID is E. So he's D, he's E. <clears throat> okay, now let's play with, let's show you what this, this guy is good for. All right, so we turn this off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Lightarama stuff, actually. I'll do it through here. So I'll right click on this guy and I'll say I want the show editor. Okay, so now I'm going to say I'm going to do a new show editor. And I'm going to call this one, let's see, we'll call this one um, Test 16. It's the 16th of April. Okay. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select the interactive tab. Okay. So I say, and then here you can select, you can list the interactive groups that will appear on triggers during the show between startup and shutdown. So you can still do the startup sequence, the shutdown sequence, all of these things, but now you can have an interactive element too. So I'm going to add. And now I have three selections. So there's jukebox. And the way a jukebox works is somebody, it, it will. Each one of these, you can have a whole list of songs. And for every input, you can have a whole list of, of sequences or animation. The magic toy, you can only have animation. Jukebox, what it will do is it will pick an item off the list, a sequence off the list, and it will play it to completion. And if somebody hits another button while you're doing that, it won't start the next song. Soundboard is like Jukebox. When someone presses a button, it will choose a, um, a sequence out of the list. But if somebody hits another button, it will then start another sequence. So it's not going to wait. So it will start right up. And then Magic Toy, you can have multiple animations going at the same time. Okay? And so in that one, you can only do um, animation sequence, not musical sequence. So I'm going to do Soundboard. And so now I need to give it a name. Okay, and I don't, know, I don't know what's good, so we'll call it SB1 for soundboard 1, okay? And then we say add a sequence, okay? So up here it says the network type, so it's basically you're, you're telling it where to find your um, input button. So I'm going to say it's at D, and then input 1 is switch number 1. And here it gives the whole the whole trigger name. And now I can list a whole bunch of sequences. Okay, and it will pick them round robin. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add one here. So for sequence, I'm going to pick um, my World of Color Flood sequence. Okay. So I put that on one. Now I want to do another one. So I'll say, okay, add another one. And it says, where do you want it? Where is it? I'm going to say it's on D. And this one's going to be input number two. Okay. And then I tell it what sequences. And I could put multiples, but again, I'm just putting one. And this one I'm going to say, I'm going to want blue floods. And that's just an animation sequence. It's not a song. Now I come in. I say add another one. Again, it's on D. So you could have multiple input pups. I'll put it on the third button. Uh, and here, this is my Mad Men flood test. Right now I have the floodlights hooked up, so that's, that's what I'm using. But this will work with any number of controllers. Okay. And I have a fourth button, so I'm going to hook this one up. Again, this is D. Four. And this one, let's do red. Okay, so now I have all of those guys. I have the four inputs. Each one has a set of songs. Now, if I wanted to go back and add more songs, I could simply go back here and hit edit and to add more stuff, but I don't want to. All right, so now I hit OK. Very important. You hit save, and now it's like any other show. Okay, so we're, we'll go start up a show. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to find my Lightarama icon here. 
And uh, first things first, I need to enable the schedule or else nothing's going to run. <coughs> okay. And so I come over here and it says enabled. Oh, look at that. It's trying to find my New Year's show. But it's not going to find it because I don't have it on this computer. So it's just going to sit there and complain, but that's all right. It's not the season. I'm going to go up here. I select show on demand. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to pick the this one that I just set up. Test 16. I open that. And now I click OK. And it's running. OK. So now it says current activity playing test 16. So this is my soundboard routine. So now everything should be working. All right. So I come over to my little input pup. And I don't remember which buttons are which, but let's play with them and see. So I'm going to hit this button. Turn up the sound. Okay, so that's the uh, Madman sequence. Okay. I come over here, and since this is a... Now, if, since this is a soundboard, it'll let me interrupt. If I did jukebox, it would, would not allow someone to pick something else until the song was finished. So now I come and I hit another button. And this would be the Red Floods. Okay. Pick the next button. And this is my World of Color sequence. So unless I got my buttons confused, this one should be blue. See that? So, very happy with this little guy. Uh, so, I've ordered a, a big red button so that I can, you know, build something that can be used to start to show. But you could use this to say you have like a bank of songs that you could have people push the buttons for. You put this in a case and then, you know, run these through the top and you can label them. So people could pick songs or they could pick different colors. So with RGB lights, I could have, you know, uh, and I have it set up for 30 seconds. So let me just turn it on again. But you could make it so people get to pick what color your house is. You could also, and since these are normally open switches, anything you can get to rig as a normally open switch, you can hook up to this. So we could use possibly motion detectors or an IR beam or, uh, you know, a pressure plate or any kind of things. Because it'd be cool, you could stick something out in the street so every time a car drove by, the, the lights in the house changed color or turned on or turned off. So there's a lot of fun. So anyway, um... That's the input pup, and of course there's two of these RJ45 jacks so that you can uh, continue to daisy chain your Lightorama devices. Alright, that's it.